Imperial Sugar's sprawling Port Wentworth complex began operations in 1917 and grew to become one of the largest sugar refining and packaging facilities in the U.S. Granulated sugar from the refinery was stored in three 100-foot tall silos and then conveyed into packing buildings where it was packaged for distribution. Granulated sugar was also converted into specialty products such as brown sugar and powdered sugar. Sugar was transported by a complex system of bucket elevators, screw conveyors, and conveyor belts. During this process, sugar spilled onto floors throughout the work area. In places, the spilled sugar was many inches deep. This sugar also contained fine particles, which became airborne. In addition, hammer mills were used to crush the granulated sugar into powdered sugar, creating even more dust. The machines were connected to a dust collection system, but it was undersized and in disrepair. And it was not connected to the bucket elevators and conveyors. Significant amounts of sugar dust escaped into the work areas. Workers routinely used compressed air to clean packaging machines, further dispersing sugar dust throughout the buildings. Over time, large amounts of dust accumulated on elevated, hard-to-clean surfaces, such as ducts, beams, and light fixtures. These surfaces were not cleaned often enough to always keep the dust below hazardous levels. In the tunnel beneath the sugar silos, granulated sugar flowed through chutes onto a long steel conveyor belt. From time to time, clumps of sugar would become stuck in one of the chutes, blocking the flow of sugar on the belt, spilling sugar onto the floor and releasing dust into the tunnel. But the tunnel was large and ventilated, so this airborne dust did not build up to explosive concentrations. In 2007, the company enclosed the conveyor belt with stainless steel panels to protect the sugar from possible contamination. It was not equipped with a dust collection system. As a consequence, sugar dust would now be trapped inside this enclosure. On February 7, 2008, clumps of sugar were found blocking one of the discharge chutes. Sugar from the adjacent silo likely spilled off the moving belt. Dust likely accumulated to an explosive concentration inside the enclosure. At about 7.15 p.m., the sugar dust contacted a nearby ignition source, likely an overheated bearing, and exploded. This primary explosion blew apart the enclosure and vented into the packing building. Accumulated sugar was lofted and ignited by the advancing fireballs. The dust clouds fueled a chain reaction of secondary explosions, which swept through the buildings. Concrete floors buckled, releasing tons of granulated and powdered sugar into the flames. Emergency evacuation drills had not been conducted, and the explosions had cut the power to much of the interior lighting. In the maze of darkened and damaged stairwells and passageways, workers desperately tried to flee the growing inferno.